Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Soccer Queens podcast, where we discuss everything female athlete performance training. I have Heather Claypax today on the show. She is a performance coach of 12 years to young athletes, and she works with a lot of soccer players, but also a plethora of other sports. So she has a wide range of experience, and she works with a ton of female athletes. And we're going to get into the topic of bulky and lifting weights. Should we worry about bulkiness? Um, should we focus on things like body composition for our performance? We're really going to do a deep dive on this topic. So Heather, welcome to the show. No, thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, let's just get right into it. it. Up until recently, I think there's been a big stigma with just weightlifting for females and female athletes in general that, you know, if you lift heavy, you're going to be bulky and they have this image in their mind of like, you know, this giant bodybuilder or this giant like box figure um, of themselves because they're lifting heavy. And I feel like that couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, I have, I mean, 10 to 20 female athletes who are playing a sport in college that they come in, they lift heavy and they, they love it, first of all, which I think is awesome. Um, but they, they truly see the benefits um, in their sport. But then also, they, they look good. They look lean, they're muscular, like, um, they've got that athletic body. And I think that that's obviously not the reason that they're lifting heavy, they're lifting heavy for their sport so that they can prepare for the demands. But I think that's an added bonus. Like, I don't know any of my female athletes that lift heavy, that look bulky. So, and as I got into this, probably like 2014, 15, we shifted our training foundations and we were going to get into that, you know, the rep schemes of like our fives and our threes and our twos with some of our compound lifts and our Olympic lifts, because we felt like these female athletes could build more resilient um, joints and tendons and ligaments. So that hopefully we could eliminate some of the injuries that we had been seeing across the board with some of these athletes who one, maybe had never lifted before, or two had been doing, you know, like the at home hit workout where they're doing stuff for, you know, time and, and, and I'm not knocking that stuff by any means. I think there's a time and a place for it, but if you want to be a serious female athlete and competitor, that stuff should just be sprinkled in when needed. Um, so we have this shift of athletes coming in and wanting to lift a little heavier, but us saying, yeah, let's program that. And I have this one athlete, like, she has been lifting with me since she was in ninth or 10th grade. And she's a, she was a fifth year senior this year at a, a local college over here. And she's the epitome of like lifts heavy and has seen so many benefits from it. She's been injury free. Watch her go through college and play her fifth year and have a stellar fifth year, all American played 90 minutes, every game, like just energizer bunny was never tired, was never hurt. You know, and we talk about it. It's like, you know, her nutrition was on point, but it was like the lifting that really she felt impacted her the most and she's not bulky. So, but I don't know if you've seen the same experiences um, or have seen a shift where girls like actually are like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not bulky. I, I look good and I feel good and I'm healthy and I'm crushing my performance. I, I love your story, first of all, with your athlete, how she has just reaped the benefits of consistent strength training and truly challenging her muscles and giving them that progressive stimulus so that they can handle the load of her sport. And that's that's one thing I see a lot with my athletes is they just see the benefits of injury resiliency and also increased confidence because they see what their body is capable of. And yeah. I don't know, I think with the the bulky thing, it's it's given this negative connotation and it, it's defined as having a heavy built. And that could mean a heavy built as in you just put on more muscle mass and that's not a bad thing especially with our athletes when we are doing a combination of strength training and sprint training there's there's no reason they should look like bodybuilder 
figure. And they, like you said, they should be athletic and they should feel empowered. So do you think this, this bulky definition has this, this negative connotation? We should just rethink how we look at it because when you strength train, you are going to get bulky to some extent, you're going to get some muscle definition. I think the term bulky in most people's mind is maybe not even like bodybuilder s, but more just like not lean and just you're muscular, but it, there's no definition. And like I said, you just look like a walking like box. I think that's what's in their mind. And I always say to them, I'm like, listen, I've been lifting heavy for 10 years. I'm five, two, and I weigh between 130, 135. And by no means do I feel like I look bulky. I would say I look muscular. I, that's the term I've been using lately. Like, cause you need to be proud of that. You need to be proud of being muscular, feeling muscular, because what you said, the confidence, like, I think that is also like a, um, unintended outcome that's maybe not talked about enough in the female sport world. Um, that's the first thing I'll say to parents when we do, um, you know, evaluations or intro sessions. Um, I'll talk about, you know, we're going to injury prevention. Cause that's, you know, that's a no brainer. Like any kind of sprint work, any kind of strength training, that's one of the goals, right? Prevent injury from happening, build resilient joints, um, improve our body composition and all that stuff. But the confidence that you have when you can can throw around a little bit of weight, the confidence you have going into your sport, I think it's not talked about enough. And I will, I leave that with my college kids. I start that with my high school kids. Like I'm excited because you're going to go from this, you know, maybe seventh, eighth grade freshman female with your head down like this you come in the weight room and you're like yeah I'm excited and then to see them leaving with their head high and shoulders forward and like I am ready to kill this fitness test or I'm ready to you know confidently step on that field and know that if I go for a 1v1 ball I'm gonna win because of all the work that I've put in in the weight room um and you can feel that I mean you know that when you you're doing your sprint training you can feel that power you're putting into the turf or the grass or whatever, wherever you're running, you can feel that you feel connected and you feel like everything's firing at the same time. And, you know, whether you're using metrics or timing, you know, whatever you, I mean, you can see those results through data. Like I have a girl right now, she's been training with me solid for three days a week since April. Um, High end soccer kid plays in the ECNL. And we started doing just flying tens. She loves it. The kids love it. I'm like, I love it. Cause I get to watch you guys improve. But that we have a leaderboard and there was this other girl up there and she's like, I, I want to be, I want to beat her. I want this little competition. And I'm like, all right, let's go. So once a month we'll test it. And she's gone from like, I think her first was like 1.26. Then we were down to like 1.24. And then we didn't do it for a little bit over summer. And so we retested recently and she hit a 1.18 flying 10. And I was like, my mind was blown. She was pumped. And I was like, how did you feel? And she's like, I felt strong. And I'm like, boom, you know, like, that's it. Like, so I think redefining that term bulky, you know, and maybe instead of bulky, like inserting, like, just, I feel muscular, I feel powerful are two huge words for me that like breeds confidence. I am glad we are going there with this conversation because that muscle mass from lifting heavy plays a big role in our running. And yes, our speed work should be electric and explosive, but it should be supplemented with that strength. And I love that she felt strong after just crushing her flying 10. And I'm honestly not surprised. It's just, you, you do feel like your muscles are just lit up through that, through that sprint. And I definitely will say body composition impacts performance and we're going to go there and Heather I think you're going to find this interesting and controversial and funny at the same time but there was a an amazing track coach who's one of my mentors on Twitter and he tweeted that you need to lose uh, body fat in order to sprint faster and scientifically, that's true. You have to have lean muscle mass to be a fast sprinter. And a lot of people got triggered by the post and maybe it could have been worded better, but he's not lying either. So let's let's talk about the importance of body composition because we have to be truthful with our athletes. 
I agree with agree with what he said. Maybe saying we need to improve our body composition, people wouldn't have been triggered, but it is what it is. Like that's the harsh reality. Like, you know, and if you're not willing to so you got you have these girls, right? They want to play at the highest, the highest level, whether soccer, volleyball, whatever. And they're willing to do anything, but when you say something like that, they almost get like offended by that, like saying, Oh, my body comes fine. I'm I'm happy in my body, which is great. But I'm telling you, if you want to get to this level, we need to increase your muscle mass, decrease your fat mass. Um, and we we just got this testing, this body comp testing machine at my facility. And it's called the Sika something. We're doing a protocol on it on Friday, so I'll know more about it. But it measures like 19 different metrics of body composition. And I believe the science behind it is that um, biological impedance, but it's an improved method. And I'm excited, but also nervous at the same time to do this with some of the athletes. I had a girl, this is back in maybe 2015. She was an amazing center midfielder. Like just, she was probably like 5'8", buck 50, buck 60, muscle, like muscle. Went and did her physical with her, her own doctor and they did BMI testing. And I'm not a fan of BMI. I think that it's a terrible measure for athletes for sure. When we're talking about like the general pop and, and obesity and stuff like that, I think it does tell you certain things about which disease track you're going on if you don't shed some weight. But so she goes, doctor says, oh man, your BMI is, you're obese. And she was like, well, I'm going to play at a very high level, high division one level of soccer. I'm not, I know I'm not obese, but it really got to her. It got to her head. She came in really upset, crying, like I'm obese. My doctor told me I need to stop lifting weights. My mind was blown. And I'm like, okay, I'm taking you down to Cleveland State where I did my undergrad and grad. Um, and we're going to go to the lab and we're going to do every single body comp, te- body, like, um, body comp test. So we did the bod pod, which measures, it's like the, you know, the gold standard of body composition, at least back then. Um, we did skin folds, we did BIA, we did all this stuff. And the resounding factor or the, res- the results were she was leaner than average right? So more muscular than average, which I could have told you looking at her. So if she came back down to earth and I was like, oh man, I feel so much better. But like, you know, even someone like her got super derailed by just one comment, right? So it's like getting, getting real with some of these athletes and saying those things might hurt, but then you show them the way to do it. And, and it's, it's through the training, it's through the sprint work, it's through a little bit of maybe nutritional changes. And I'm not saying to cut carbs or anything crazy like that, but take a look at what we're eating, when we're eating it and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I think what he said was true and people need to either get real with themselves or take a look and say, okay, maybe, maybe that's not the route that I want to go. The BMI is awful. It's <laughs> it's a total disaster. And for everyone listening, if, if you're an athlete um, or a, a parent or coach of female athletes, body composition is a valuable tool. And it, it is good to know how much fat-free mass you have. And that's more of your, your muscle composition. And But you just need to know yourself. If you want to track something and you're self-aware and you can handle it, great. Or if you're someone who goes off of feeling, if you feel like you can perform well, then that's fine too. Just pay attention to certain things. And for, for athletes who want to really pay attention to if they're performing well or not, what are some things they can, they can look at some feedback within their, their mind, their body? What, what are some things to look out for? You know, recovery is huge. And I think sleep in general, I don't, I don't know that our high school and college athletes get enough. Um, You know, we, when we train our college kids in the summer, we've got a seven or 8 a.m. session and, you know, we always ask like, how's everybody feeling? Like, how do our legs feel? Are we heavy? Like, you know, do we get a good night's sleep? Cause like those play factors in what we're going to do. Like if our, if half the group's like, man, I I slept like crap, my legs feel heavy and you know, whatever, we're not going to do any heavy sprint work because we're more prone to that, that injury track. Um, so I think definitely just in general, like how was your recovery last night? How do your legs feel after, you know, the session yesterday, how mentally, where are you at? Because you could feel great waking up, but like mentally you're just not dialed in. And I think as coaches, like those are the not that, you know, 
the non X's and O's that we need to pay attention to. So I'd say like sleep recovery, um, gen- generally how our body feels, um, and mentally where, where we're at, um, you know, are we ready to really crush this, you know, you know, uh, not one rep max, but like maybe a three rep max deadlift today. And if we're not like, then that's okay. We've identified it and we're understanding our bodies, but like, why aren't we ready for it? What did we do yesterday or the day before? Or what didn't we do? Um, you know, the, so many of those factors we talk about, and it's like so frustrating because we as coaches don't have control of what they do once they leave the facility or once they leave our training session, um, you know, and to educate them more on how they can continue to train at the volume of training that they want to be at is huge. I think, I think it's sometimes more important than the actual programming, because if you are just mentally burnt out, physically feeling kind of crap, happy you're not sleeping well you've got boyfriend girlfriend blah 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 family all these issues going on outside of there can definitely negatively impact your your strength training and your your training in general so um i keep going back to my little list but i think recovery how we're eating how we feel in that way and just in general how does our body feel you know going back to my athlete who after she sprinted and hit that 1.18 like she felt powerful and strong like okay cool now I know we can crush this lift too because she's on a high from this great time and mentally she's you know riding this high physically she feels great so sweet we're gonna we're gonna push some heavy lunges or whatever it may be um so having conversations just having conversations with your athletes that's really how you can you know dive in and attack where they're feeling great but also modify where they're feeling not so great paying attention to the the energy, the recovery, the focus, the the motivation, the mindset to work out is so important and that's when you know you're you're at a good level of body composition and you're still hitting those performance numbers and it's interesting I saw I think it was a registered dietitian post somewhere that most female athletes will not have a quote unquote ideal body composition as long as they're in sport. They might have a little bit more weight than they imagine so that they can perform and have balanced hormonal levels. Instead of being at a 130, you might be great at a 145. And that's just the reality of it to to play your sport. So it's it's really important for, for female athletes to find that equilibrium w- within their bodies and just avoid the the nonsense on social media and the the diet culture and look at accounts that are more performance based and like Heather's and her athletes lifting heavy and feeling powerful. So Heather, what what are your thoughts on just body composition and just further exploring the idea of look, you might be a little bit more heavy for your sports career. But when you end, your your body might change because the, the needs are different and the energy expenditure is different. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So two thoughts. I'm going to use myself as an example. So when I was in college, um, I weighed probably like 120, not a healthy 120 by any means. And it wasn't um it wasn't that I wasn't eating properly. I mean, I was I was definitely eating, trust me, I have no problem eating. Um, but the the demand of playing at a division one level, like you are, you're going to school, you have lifting in the morning, you have training in the afternoon, then you're doing, you know, whatever sprint work, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it was, it was hard for me to like, keep that weight on. Like realistically, I would have loved to have been where I'm at now. I feel a thousand times better where I'm at now than I did in college. Also, we weren't lifting properly. Um, you know, my sleep was terrible. Um, but I, I ran into the problem where I burned out quick. Like I, rather than peaking, I was like down, like mid season. I felt like crap. Legs felt heavy. Um, when you talk about your menstrual cycle, mine was non-existent and and that plays a huge factor. And I know you talk on that topic a lot, which I think is awesome. Um, I love the app, the fitter, fitter woman app. Wish we would have had that back then. Um, cause in my mind, I was like, what's wrong with me? I'm, I'm lifting, I'm running, I'm eating, blah, 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 like everything, you know, And I wasn't at, I was not at a healthy body weight. Like I couldn't, and and I, my performance was okay. Um, 
I didn't feel good though. I didn't feel great. Like I said, recovery was terrible. Legs hurt. I was eating Motrin. Like it was my job. Like I always joke around and say, I wouldn't be addicted to like hard drugs. I'd be addicted to Motrin because it made all my aches and pains go away. But if I would have addressed, you know, my body composition and said, look, I need to really focus on gaining more weight so that I felt better, um, perform better. You know, my, my menstrual cycle would have normaled out. Um, and even on that, like emotionally, because my menstrual cycle was so jacked up, I was up and down, like, you know, and I, it, it was terrible. Um, you know, and flash forward to some of my athletes now who, um, I wish I could have been like them. Like there's a, a couple of girls that just have it together. Like, and yeah, you know, maybe they aren't at the, 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 the weight that they see themselves being at after, because like you said, you're carrying more muscle mass, you're carrying maybe a little bit more fat mass, but it's, it's because of the way that you are training and preparing for your sport and they're doing it right. They feel great. They're able to peak in season when they should. Their endurance is awesome. Um, their menstrual cycles are normal. Um, there's their recovery feels better. Like they're not achy. Like I remember just being like telling my mom, like my body just aches. Like it just aches. And, um, I didn't know better back then. So it's like cool for me to like give back to the girls who I do see struggling in that way, you know, and it's a hard conversation and it's not something you want to hear like, Hey, you need to gain weight. You need to gain a little bit of fat mass. Like nobody wants to hear that. And when I tell, when I tell them my story, like, look, I'm a solid 135 now. I feel better. I, and I'm 36. I would, I would kick 20, 20 year old Heather's butt. Like, and it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Like, and I'm 36, like, you know what I mean? So it's like, I wish I would have understood all that back then that it it was, you know, and I think that the scale is it's don't get on it. Don't get on it more than like maybe once every three months, like, cause that number does not dictate your performance, you know, like I think that where, yes, there is a happy medium of like girl in situations where you do need to have less fat mass, but I think there's also situations that aren't talked about where you should have more fat mass and be a little bit heavier so that you feel better because I would have felt better, you know? There, there absolutely is a happy medium and there's just a lot coming out on female athletes and missed periods. And I'm so glad we're talking about the menstrual cycle because it is a vital sign for the health of, of the athlete and girls who just really drop that fat mass so drastically for their body type, for their height, and then they lose their menstrual cycle and they burn out or they're constantly tired. That is so dangerous. So I'm glad you brought up Fitter Woman. That is definitely a good tracking app to check out and make sure that your hormones are are balanced and you have proper nutrition and you're getting enough calories and enough recovery as well. And uh, I do want to ask you, how how tall are you? Five, two and a quarter. <laughs> I'd throw that Five, quarter two in. Five, two and a quarter. <laughs> So that's interesting. So in, in college when, so you you're five, two, and then in college, when you were constantly tired and sore all the time, you said you were at 120 pounds. 120, yeah. Bare, barely. Right. Like, soaking wet. like, I mean, I fought to be over that, you know, 119 range. Um, wow. I was skinny, like, mm-hmm. and I didn't want, I, that wasn't the goal by any means. Like I just, you know, and, and, there's genetics and stuff like that. And, you know, both my parents are very lean and, you know, my dad can eat <laughs> chips and ice cream every day of his life and he'll still be lean. Um, so I, I do, I do think that there's something to be said about women who can't put on weight. It's as frustrating as women who can't take off weight. And I just, I just remember tired, achy, like, and I remember learning about the female triad when I was in grad school and I was like, holy crap, like mm-hmm. I, I think I had that, like, you know, I didn't know what that was until I had a, a nutrition class and we talked about it and I was like, Whoa, like, mm-hmm. you know, like I don't, didn't have an eating disorder. So that was the one part that was lacking, but I was over exercising. So there you go. Like, right. Um, it, yeah, it, there's, we don't, and talk you about weren't that. doing as much strength training back then as you are now. Oh, yeah. So I mean, that's, that's interesting. Um, and, and that, that makes sense. Um, so you could have been maybe okay at 
125 to 130 if you had put on that that muscle mass um, or maybe you would have weighed a little bit more but it is important to understand for everyone listening that a 120 or a 16% body fat may not work for one person but maybe it will work for another person for performance it it really depends on the individual which is why it is so dangerous for our female athletes to compare body types and body composition with other girls on their team or on social media, you have to really focus on you and your performance. So let's dive into this comparison topic, because I think that is the the root of the issue with girls feeling insecure about their, their bodies. Absolutely. You know, and we've talked on this topic before, like social media is great, but social media is also not so great for certain reasons. And, um, and I think even now more than ever, like this, this picture, this image of like a fit woman um, can be very distorted, right? Like you can, you see some of these females who are just uber freaking skinny. They got that whatever thigh gap thing that was like big a couple of years ago. And it's like, you know, um, but you see you, you're flooded with that on Instagram and Twitter and, and any social media and to be an athlete, like you cannot have that stature. I don't care what sport you play. Like you cannot have that stature. So, and uh, not off topic, but on topic, but kind of regressing. I have this little one, she's 11 and she's probably one of my favorite clients. Like she is just, the personality is huge. Like, and she, when I first had her, so she had been going on a year. She had just turned 11 and, or maybe she was 10, 10 and a half. Anyway. So doing just basic stuff, like learning how to land properly, learning how to do some single leg stuff and whatever. And, um, she, it was fun training. She wasn't totally like into it, into it, but she liked coming and seeing me and whatever. And then there was a little gap that went by. Um, she ended up breaking her arm and I didn't see her for like two months within that two month span. She just sprouted up, like sprouted. And she said to me, how do I get smaller quads smaller legs and I was like you're 11 like your legs are small like you don't have any true muscle mass right now you have neuromuscular you know increases in your strength but like you're not going to see super big physical changes at your age but I was like why do you want smaller legs like I got all like no like you know and I was like you I'm like you want strong muscular legs and she's like well does that mean that I'm lean and I'm like you are 11 why are you talking about this um, and it's because they're on freaking Instagram and they see you, you have some young kids who are, are, you know, throwing around some good weight, but they are very skinny and it's because they have, they don't have that. They haven't hit puberty yet, you know? Um, but she has flipped the switch of like, not really wanting training to be fun, but wanting training to be like training where I think that's okay, but like, it still needs to be fun. Like we still need to understand that you're only 11. You shouldn't necessarily care about being skinny like what you see on Instagram you know and I'm like you should be excited about the cool stuff that your body can do because you're strong like you can hop on that you know the tallest box that we have and you can hang from a pull-up bar for a minute and you can hex bar deadlift you know your body weight and all that stuff um but even at 11 she's starting to compare herself to that stuff um Mm -hmm. and and even said to her I said something like well do I you know what do you think I look like? What would you call me? And she's like, well, you're muscular. And I was like, right. I'm not, you know, I'm not super skinny, like whatever. And I'm like, but I'm not, you know, a bodybuilder. And she's like, well, yeah, I want to, I want to look like that. I want to look like you. And I was like, okay, that's better. Like, let's say that, whatever, you know, but then fast forward to high school, we see that at our gym all the time. You know, you got that look right now where they're wearing like the super tight spandex and the long shirts where you're like, are you wearing pants? Like what's going on? You know? And I like it because it's, you're you're confident in your legs and stuff like that. But it's like, I know that you are lifting right now to look like the Instagram model who's probably Photoshopped and, Mm -hmm. you know, has a million dollars and has an in-home chef and all this equipment and a trainer. She's not training to go play at a division one college and, you know, be a center midfielder. You know what I mean? It's like, but they're so young that they don't have that thought process yet of mm-hmm. she's a woman and not playing a sport in college. She doesn't need to be prepared for, you know, another giant center midfielder to hit me or to B 
be able to sprint faster than that person. And but to do that, you need to have, you know, you need to lift heavy and have more muscle mass. So it's like, it's very frustrating. And we see it. I see it in, in even in some of my like super strong, confident females. They'll say something like, oh, I saw this on TikTok. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, that's great. We're not doing that. Like, you know, whatever. Or like, that's not our goal. Our goal is for you as a track runner to run faster than the other girls, not to look skinnier, have a six pack and be an influencer. Sad. It, it It's sad that, that girls are looking at these models online and just chasing that look and that body type. And it's just, it's just not going to help them perform for the level of their sport. If you're a, a double zero waist and you got a huge thigh gap and there's no muscle definition and you're just doing cardio that is not going to prepare you to be a healthy athlete who has a long career and it's so sad heather hearing that even your young middle school girls are succumbing to this and i've i've seen a lot of that as well and sadly just obsessive behavior and eating habits start to come up at such a young age when they're exposed to that. So we we encourage everyone to just not follow those accounts and follow professional female athletes, follow yeah. division one players. I mean, the, the amount of girls who told me they didn't watch UNC, UCLA, the national final is insane. You should be looking up to those women. Get off the yeah. women on TikTok. What are you doing? Yeah. It was an amazing game. And you look at the body type and the strength and the power of the UCLA, UNC girls. And oh my gosh, it was out of this world. And yeah. any young girl should get excited about that and aspire for that. 100%. Um, I, you know, I, I just saw it yesterday on Instagram. I don't, I don't know if you follow them and this is not a shameless plug. <laughs> is that what the kids say? Um, tactic nutrition. They are, they're awesome. Two females. Um, they were CrossFit athletes, but they talk on all these topics too. And the one yesterday was like, she was frustrated. and She was like, just don't do it. Don't do the juice cleanse. Don't do the cut the carb thing. Like, and they're talking to athletes cause they're, an, they're an athlete they're both still athletes. They both still compete. Um, they're probably a little bit younger than me, maybe in their thirties, but their account is awesome because they talk about other stuff as it pertains to females. And I, I love their account. And I shared it yesterday on my Instagram and I was like, you know, this is some just great information. Although she was being funny, she was being serious. Like, you know, and it was, she, and I'm sure they go on and on about different, um, you know, stigmas and hot trends and all that stuff but it was like you know like you said follow those accounts that like if you want to be a division one soccer player you should be following all that stuff you should be watching all that stuff see what they're doing because what they're what they did to get there like I'm sure they shared their story like you know and I'm sure they weren't cutting their carbs and going on you know the next keto fad or whatever because it's like you said it's not sustainable and it, it it's so social media can be great if you're following the right accounts and it can be so detrimental to your, to your performance. If you're not following the right accounts, you're following those wrong accounts that are just, you know, they look how they want to look and they think that that's how, that's how they're going to feel great. And I'm sure if you dove into how they actually feel, you'd find out that probably some of them are maybe, you know, their menstrual cycles are way off and they're always tired. And it's just the two seconds they're on camera that's when they're like, you know, looking their best Photoshop spray, you know, whatever, all that crap. It, it can really be deceiving too. When you look at someone's life on social media, a, an influencer, a, a model, and you look at this beautiful, happy woman in her pictures, but on the inside, she could be really broken or she could be struggling with something. And I've seen a lot of models speak out about how they've put on this show on Instagram to appear that they're vibrant and healthy. And then they miss their cycles. Their hormones were all over the place. They weren't happy. Um, they suffered depression and they're starting to speak out more and starting to get healthy, which I think is good to, to bring awareness to that. 
So for everyone listening, when you look at these accounts, be careful who you aspire to be because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Be careful who you're jealous of on Instagram. They might have some problems going on too. So stay in your own lane and and focus on your performance and your health and really just nourishing your body how a high performing athlete should. I think the other thing that I'll hear sometimes when some of our our kids come back from school or or whatever, or they're getting recruited um, to these colleges, like sometimes your coach is going to be wrong and out of line with like, you know, I'm not going to name the school, but we've had a couple girls go here and transfer because the coach is like insane on their diets and having control over how much, you know, they're lifting and, and the over kill of the fitness, like the running and the sprinting and, you know, and we'll get them back. And not only do they look just, you know, just gaunt or whatever you want to call it, but they, they're like the shell of who they were when they left in the summer. And it's more the mental and emotional status that they are coming out of where you have some of these higher division one coaches who, you know, they think that they know best. And it's like, they know, they know their soccer stuff or they know their basketball stuff. They should have no business talking on, you know, what kind of, nutrition you should be following and you know what kind of lifting you should be doing like leave leave that up to your 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 strength coach or your your nutrition coach like I think that every college should have some kind of nutrition person on staff because not all strength coaches dabble in that and and you know I'll be the first one to say like I'll give recommendations but I'll never prescribe a program because I don't fully know like one like what is their previous you know do they have distorted eating like how do you manage that like so I think that's not talked about enough that you could have a a coach who's giving you some negative stuff and it's not good. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of messed up people out there and the, the, the wording they use with our female athletes can be very damaging. And I think it's important what we've discussed in our conversation today to focus on performance and adding weight to the bar and getting your sprint times faster and giving effort in every workout and being intentional and feeling at your best. I think that's just such a better way to reframe this topic around body composition, impact on performance. So I'm glad you brought that up. Now, one thing you brought up earlier that I want to circle back to is um, the, the concept of these girls showing their bodies and we're going to go there right now because the the mom in me is coming out and I'm sure in you as well but I I do see a lot of young athletes on Instagram posting bikini pictures and look if you feel confident in your body that's a great thing but my question is if you truly feel confident do you need to post you not wearing any clothes to get approval is that true confidence and empowerment or is confidence from within and you're comfortable in your body and you don't need to post it for people to like it so let's go there Heather (laughs) I'm in I'm totally in um all the moms listening are like yes (laughs) you know what's what's crazy to me too is like we'll have some of these younger kids like these 11 year olds that look like they're 27 by the way that they dress. Yes. And I, mean, like, I talked about that the other day with my high school girls. They said they looked older than them. And I could agree with that. They do. Like there's some of these girls I'm like, and I look at my Bexley, who's going to be four in April. And she, I'm like, I'll kill you. <laughs> like, you are you're, you're a, you're a girl mom. You have two girls, right? Two girls. Yeah, yeah. Two girls. Um, and, and I don't think I'm going to have to worry about that with Bex. Like she's, the perfect blend between my wife and I, which is like, what was our best case scenario? Like she looks like my wife, but she acts a lot like me. And she's kind of like, kind of like a bro. Like, she's always disheveled. Like hair is always nuts. She's always getting into something. Like she's always hurling her body down the stairs on her new stair slide thing. Like, so I don't, I'm hoping also, I'm hoping the trend kind of flips. Like we're talking about this now. And I think there is starting to be like, we're talking about lifting heavier, and you know enjoying your muscular body and all that stuff I think we're going there and but this is the topic that yes I think that if if you are truly confident in yourself you don't need to post 
these half naked pictures, um, regardless, whatever, whatever age you're at. Like, and it's funny. Cause I said this to my wife, we went to Hilton head two years ago and I've never run in a sports bra. I've never run with like spandex shorts and that kind of stuff. And, and I feel like I could, if I wanted to, because I'm confident in my body and whatever, it was super freaking hot down there that year. It was like a hundred degrees. And I'm trying to run like a psychopath at like two in the afternoon when it's like the height of the heat and I'm running and I'm like, I can't do this. Take off my shirt or whatever. And Allie's like, Oh, I can't believe you did that. Like you've never done that. And I'm like, you know what? Like it's hot and I don't care. Like, I don't care. Um, but yeah, like we, I've had to unfollow some of my former athletes because I feel like a creep when, even though I'm scrolling, right. I'm just scrolling through my feed and I'll scroll and I'm like, what, who is that? And I'll go back and I'm like, dear Lord, like, no, absolutely not. Like that's sending the wrong message, you know? And then I have my other athletes who are, they still show it off, but they're very tasteful about it. Like they'll show their legs off, which I think that's awesome because I think a lot of females like don't want to show their legs off because they, they think they're too muscular or they're too, you know, bulky. Um, and I think that's cool. Like when you want to show off your nasty quads that are like just ripped and you're proud of that, I think that's cool. But yeah, like I think you're sending the wrong message to these younger kids who are 11 and 12 who see that and say, oh, that's what a confident woman looks like. Mm-hmm. No, a confident woman could look like my athlete D who just crushed a 463 pound deadlift, you know, in her baggy t-shirt and soccer shorts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's confidence to me. Like, and then showed up the next day feeling amazing and crushed your sprint work today. Like that's confidence to me. And I think that if we speak out more on that stuff, like it'll, it'll make it, it'll swing back around and you'll see cool stuff like that. Like maybe she posts a picture of her awesome quad strength after she hits that deadlift. I don't know. But I think that the more we talk about it and the more we say like, Hey, you don't have to do that. Are you just looking for validation from the internet? Because if you are, then like, that's a deeper issue. You know what I mean? Like it should, you shouldn't be looking for validation or acceptance or any of that, or fishing for compliments over social media. Like that's spread that, that gives me a, a huge red flag and something else deeper is going on within that person is what I take from that. Well, and the, the validation from the internet, it's so temporary and it, it's not going to fill you up. It's not a lasting fulfillment and, and peace. And you're always relying on people to comment. Yes, queen, like hot stuff. Like, why do you need that? Why do you need that approval? Just be okay with yourself in a hoodie and baggy pants and what also, I'm in right now <laughs> it's exactly and it's so funny my fiance always makes fun of me about this I hate yoga pants I haven't worn them and I don't even know when I last wore them but I just like to be baggy and covered up when I'm in public because I don't want other guys other than my fiance looking at me right. and I think that's a good message for young girls if you're behaving like that on Instagram and you're half naked and showing off this and that you might attract the wrong guys in your life too or the the wrong partner because they only see you as a body and that's just how men are that's just the nature of men and we influence that as women so present yourself in a way where you're attracting someone who respects you for you and your heart. And I'm playing mom right now. And I think I'm just going to end on that one. Do you have anything to expound on? (laughs) No, I, I agree. I think, and like I said, I think if we keep talking about this stuff, like the positive body composition and you know, what, what actually is confidence and that kind of stuff, I think that this flip will start to happen more and more and more. And you know, you'll see less of like the, the attracting the wrong person and, you know, the, like the sexualization of the kids. Like that's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's a whole topic for a different day. We need to keep talking about what and what confidence actually looks like from a female standpoint and not what the internet is telling us it looks like. I love that. And I think we we just had such a powerful message in this conversation and really encouraging female athletes to 
lift heavy, progress in their strength and speed and train like athletes and have a healthy body, healthy hormones. And that's what's going to improve your confidence and mental health. It's more sustainable. It's, it's more realistic. It's healthier. So guys, I hope what Heather had to say impacted you and hopefully we rocked your world with this episode, but please follow up with Heather. I'll leave her links in the caption below. Heather, what is your Instagram handle? So it's Heather underscore C underscore T3. Brilliant. So guys, be sure to follow Heather's amazing work. I hope her athlete videos absolutely inspire you because she's doing such great work. So Heather, thank you again. And I will see everyone in the next week's episode.